Hey guys, doing another What's Next. This is on, uh, I'm sorry, drawing a blank already as we get started. Now, this is on IBF Interim Super Bantamweight Champion, Ryosuke Iwasa. He's also the former full IBF champion. He's at uh, Super Bantamweight 122. Um, Iwasa last fought, or he's currently, currently my number five Super Bantamweight in the world right now. He last fought in um, December on a Showtime undercard when he defeated Marlon Tapolis, a former 118 pound champion, when he fought him and stopped him in the 11th round impressively. It was a really good fight. Um, he was just uh, the longer and the bigger fighter. He broke him down and stopped him in 11 rounds. Um, you know, it was on a Showtime undercard. He looked good and it was a good performance. So with that fight, he became the IBF interim champion. And basically what that means is the mandatory challenger for the IBF title. Um, next up, uh, you know, from what I heard from the new uh, IBF and Unified Champion um, Akhmad Akhmadayev, the undefeated uh, champion, that he's trying to set up a fight with Iwasa uh, in his home country of Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan, one of those stands. Um, he's trying to set up a, a homecoming fight against him there, but it looks like that's the that's the direction that Akhmadayev is going in. At first, I thought Akhmadayev might not take the fight just because. You know, he wants to face a bigger name, but he doesn't want to give up the title, and Iwasa is in line for that title. So, um, I think personally, I think that's the fight that's going to happen. But let's run through the top 10 and see um, what could happen if Akhmadayev decides to not fight him uh, for for the the vacant or for the world title. So, let's um, let's go with run through the top 10 and see what's next for Ryosuke Iwasa. We start with the number one undefeated unified champion, uh, Mirajan Akhmadayev. Um, I believe these two guys are fighting next. I think that's going to be the showdown. Akhmadayev wants to stay the unified champion. He has to fight Iwasa to be able to do that. I think it's going to be a good fight. I really think it could go either way. I think Akhmadayev's youth and his confidence after beating Daniel Roman, I would pick him to win that fight, but I wouldn't be surprised if Iwasa pulled it off either. So, But I do think that's going to be next for both these guys. Number two is a showdown with former unified champion Daniel Roman. Um, I'm not seeing it, but I wouldn't completely rule it out. I'm not 100% sure if Iwasa is promoted by the PBC or not. Um, I know he fought both times last year with the PBC on PBC card, so I don't know if he's co-promoted by them or not, but I know Daniel Roman is with um, Matchroom, and he's trying to get back in line for an Akhmadayev rematch, but um, I honestly think that if Akhmadayev doesn't fight Iwasa, it's because he's going to give Roman a rematch. I don't see any other big names for him to be willing to give up his IBF title. So that's what I think. So I don't see Iwasa and Roman happening. Um, number three is reigning WBO champion Imanu Navarrete. Unification is not going to happen here unless Iwasa is not with PBC and he... Um, becomes the interim champion somehow and is allowed to uh, unify belts against the, the WBO champion, which is Navarrete, but I really don't think all that's going to happen, so I'm not seeing it. Number four is the undefeated WBC champion, Ray Vargas. Now, if for some reason Akhmadayev doesn't want to face Iwasa and Vargas is still in optional mode somehow, um, I really think because Vargas is with the PBC now and Iwasa has been working with the PBC... If Akhmadayev doesn't fight him, Iwasa's going to get upgraded to full IBF champion. And then I think it's very possible these two guys could lock horns in a unification bout since Vargas fought, you know, um, for, um, I mean, since Vargas is now with the PBC and Iwasa's been working with the PBC. So this fight, I'm leaning towards the less likely because I do believe it's going to be Akhmadayev, but I do think that if Akhmadayev doesn't fight him and he gets upgraded to full champion, then these two guys could lock horns. Um, number five is Iwasa. Number six is um, Azat Havanasian. Not going to happen here. Um, Iwasa, like I said, I believe he's going after Akhmadayev. And um, that's it. If he be, uh, moves up and becomes full IBF champion, I don't think he'd face Havanasian next. I mean, he could, but um, if he has anything to do with the PBC, they'd have to work with Golden Boy. It's not a mandated fight, so I don't see it. Um, number... Number seven is undefeated WBA regular champion Brandon Figueroa. Now, here's another possibility, in my opinion, because if Akhmadayev doesn't fight him, 
and he becomes the interim or gets bumped up to full champion. Now um, Figueroa would would be facing Ronnie Rios, but I think he'd be ready right away to face Iwasa. Um, I don't think it's going to happen next because I think even if Akhmadaya doesn't face Iwasa, he's probably going to get a, a title defense in before a unification with Figueroa. But and and like I said, Figueroa has to face Ronnie Rios next, but. It could happen after that, but it's not going to happen next. Number eight is Ronnie Rios. Um, not going to happen next. Rios is lined up to face Brandon Figueroa for the WBA regular title. Number nine is uh, Inuit Baluda. I do believe this fight could be possible if he becomes the IBA, if he gets bumped up to full champion because Akhmadayev doesn't fight him. Baluda beat a guy that beat Iwasa in TJ Dahani. He upset him earlier this year. So, I think Iwasa could be like, hey, I'll fight Baluda in my first defense, an optional defense. If he can't find anything else, I'll fight him. I'll bring him over. I think Baluda would take the fight in a heartbeat. And so I do think this is possible if he becomes the IBS full champion. And then finally at number 10 is a rematch with former IBF champion TJ Dahani. Not seeing it. Um, you know, if he wanted to extract some revenge on Dahani, maybe. But Dahani would have to accept after losing he would have to go straight into a title fight and that's only in my opinion it only be possible if Iwasa gets bumped up to from interim to full champion so that's what I think so that's the top 10 right there what do I think now now what do I think Real Skate Iwasa is going to do next I believe it's going to be a mandatory fight against Mirajan Akamadaya for the unified title that's what I think is going to happen um Mirajan already said that's what he wants to do next. So I'm pretty sure that that mandatory is going to go through and he's going to go after that. If that doesn't happen, I think a unification against Ray Vargas is possible because Iwasa will be the full IBF champion. And then maybe after that, if that uh, doesn't happen, then I think the possibility of Inuit, Baluda, maybe Daniel Roman after that, TJ Dahani, all that. But I really believe it's going to be the unification against Akhmadayev. As I said, I think Iwasa is going to lose that fight. But I do believe he's a live underdog and can pull off the upset. So we'll see what happens. That's uh, the what's next on my number five super bantamweight in the world right now. The IBF interim champion, Ryosuke Iwasa. Hope you enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.